Hello everyone, I'm Ben. And I'm Karthik. And today we're going to be talking about how to use Jupyter Notebooks with our Docker containers. So, uh, this video is assuming that you have watched the, the previous video telling you how to install uh, Docker container or Docker on your respective machines. And now we're going to be taking that a step further and showing you how to actually work within the Jupyter Notebooks, how to create new Jupyter Notebooks, and how to do all of that stuff. And one more thing, we have, we'll have a link in the description to that GitHub page if you have any trouble downloading any of the information or whatever. Yeah, all right, so let's jump into it. So as the last video said, you can see up here on the top of my screen on my status bar that Docker is running. Um, so what we can do there is, then is go over to our desktop, and if I do ls, you'll see that I have this startup Mac virtualization.sh file. This is all referred to in the last video, so if you're a little confused, check out the GitHub page, go back and watch the previous video, and that should be explanatory. But, so as you can see, this is an executable, so we can do dot slash startup Mac virtualization.sh, and if we hit enter, since the Docker daemon's running, it's going to open the Jupyter Notebook in a in our web browser. Sometimes you uh, it takes a second to load, but here we go. And so um, this is the Jupyter Notebook environment. Uh, this is run entirely within the Docker container. So if you go back over here to this screen, you'll see that we have actually opened a kernel for the Docker container. So now before, remember, we were in desktop up here. Uh, now we're actually in a virtual machine inside of the computer uh, that is run by the Docker container. So basically, this is an entire, in, as far as your computer is concerned, this is an entirely separate uh, kernel and operating system. So that's the cool part about Docker Container is that now we're running this Jupyter Notebook from within a machine within inside of your machine. Um, so that's why this is so powerful and useful. And now we're going to jump into how to create a Jupyter Notebook and some basic functions of that Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to pass it over to Karthik. All right. So if you want to create a Jupyter Notebook, just go up here to this new section and then hit this Python 3 button. And so now this is going to launch a new Jupyter Notebook and you can see here that we have our first uh, cell. That's what they're called here. In this case, this is a Python cell. So I can do things like print hello world. And we can see the output there. And so now you'll notice there's a new cell. You can even, um, oh yeah, OK. Uh, whenever you want to actually run a cell, you need to hit Shift Enter. And you'll notice that this actually creates a new cell underneath it. So in this cell, I can do things like, 2 plus 4, and that's going to be 6, so there's the output, and it makes a new cell. If you don't want to make a new cell, but you still want to run some Python code, you can do the following. So I'm going to say uh, print don't make a new cell. And if I do control enter, then it ran that command, but notice how it didn't actually make a new cell. Um, and one way to tell that the command has run is just to look at this number here on the side of the cell. So as you can see, it's a 2 now. When we run it, it's going to move up to the most recent number. So it's basically just numbering. It's the count of the number of cells you've ran on this kernel. Right. And one of the great things about Jupyter Notebooks is, say you've had a couple of blocks of code here, and now you want to write something about those blocks of code. You can actually go up to this button over here, hit the plus sign, and then if you click on it, and hit M on your keyboard, it's now in the markdown section. So this is markdown. Uh, and then you can hit shift enter on that and you can see that even though that wasn't valid Python code, it's markdown so you can actually print that to your screen. Yeah, and some other stuff you can do with markdown, you can add a title, you can add a subtitle, and then if you do the shift enter and run the cell, you're basically going to get these, uh, this is a title, this is a subtitle, and it's going to bold them and make your, you're going to be able to make your code very nice and friendly with that. And so that's stuff that will uh, you will see within our notebooks that we're going to be working with. Right. And one more thing, uh, you can actually insert cells anywhere. So we've been kind of going uh, linearly down, but I can just click up here on this cell. I can, you know, run it again using shift enter or whatever, but I can also click plus and I can move the cell around, as you can see, and then I can do whatever I need to do here as well. And here's another interesting thing. Let's say I make a variable down here. Let's call it x equals 10. Well, now Python remembers that this variable is x equals 10, so I can actually uh, go up here, create a new cell, and then just do print x. And it's not going to be confused, even though x is further down. 
And you can tell because the uh, this was the eighth Python command that we ran, and this was the ninth Python command that we ran. Yeah, so it's basically not running them in the order of the cells. It's running them in the order that you run the cells. So that's kind of another nice thing about Jupyter Notebook. All right, so that's how you would create a new Jupyter Notebook. If you want to change the title, you just go up here and say, my notebook, whatever you want to call it. And then it's going to save it, and we can exit out. And um, we didn't save it, but we will. If you just hit Command S, it'll save. And you go back here, you see that we now have this My Notebook, and we can open it again, and we're going to be at the same place that we were before. Um, OK, so continuing on. Um, so those were notebooks you could create yourself, but we've also included notebooks from the JezDisk data recipes that you guys are going to be able to use to uh, learn some things about earth, uh, earth science and how to, how to analyze this data and how to cl uh, clean it and collect it. So basically what we have here is a Jupyter notebook that is for working with a specific, uh, a specific data set. So as you can see, we have some markdown files, we have some Python code, and you can, just, you can go through and run these Python, this Python code. And uh, we've taken care of all these dependencies for uh, these packages that don't necessarily come natively with Anaconda. So all that's taken care of here. And um, one other thing. If you, uh, if you ever see a section that looks like this right here, this is actually a uh, command prompt command that you need to run. So you can just copy this and then go back to the terminal screen. And then you can just paste it and then run it. And then you'll see that that worked. And it'll take care of everything for you. That's another nice thing about um, since we're working within this kernel, we know exactly what your file scheme is going to be like. So we can have these commands be very exact. And you'll be able to goof around with this once you are uh, once you go through these notebooks. Uh, but so basically, there's a lot of commands. Whenever, like Karthik said, whenever you see these markings here, you're going to want to run them in your terminal. And besides that, they should be pretty straightforward. Um, the last thing we'll say is if you are working on a notebook, and let's say you want to clear everything in the Python's memory so you can start over, in a sense, you want to go um, up here to kernel, and then you want to restart and clear output. And it's basically then going to go back and erase everything you've done in Python while keeping all the cells the same. So from now on, you can just shift enter these cells, and they will be run as if you hadn't run them before. Um, so thank you for listening, and good luck with these notebooks. And uh, we hope you enjoy them. Thanks.